I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, staff roll. Noted attendance. Okay. Uh, five commissioners present, two absent. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on February 22nd. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Motions were made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Thank you. Um, next is opportunity for citizens to address the commission on items not printed on the agenda. Is there anyone that needs to discuss anything not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, move on to the first item. That's a public hearing um, on a conditional use permit and variances for Taco Bell, uh, 140 East 78th Street. Staff? Thank you. Border Foods has applied for a conditional use permit and variances to allow construction of a new Taco Bell restaurant at the former Burger King location along Interstate 494. This site is zoned mixed-use community, which conditionally permits restaurants with drive-up service. The applicant has attempted to meet or improve the site in regard to all required standards, but has applied for variances and instances where the requirements cannot be met. In 2005, the city adopted an I-494 corridor master plan, which has since been incorporated into the city's comp plan. These plans stress a mix of uses, walkability, cohesive design, and active use. The subject site has significantly, is significantly constrained by size, location, and limited visibility. The applicant has proposed a plan that includes a new attractive building, significantly improved landscaping, improved parking, and enhanced walkability. It is the opinion of staff that the proposal meets the intent of the comprehensive plan. There are a number of different uh, review, review criteria that apply to this. They're all attached to your staff report and a significant attachment at the back. So I'm just going to go over a few areas uh, that we should note. Variances from the following requirements have been requested. Minimum building stories, minimum building coverage, maximum front and side setbacks, patron entrance locations, parking location, and drive up lane location. And just going over a few code one code requirement that was unclear. Uh, the code states that drive up must be part of a multi-tenant mixed use development. Freestanding buildings shall not have drive up facilities unless they are designed to minimize impacts to the pedestrian environment and adequately address uh, circulation issues and potential noise or light pollution. So there are really two ways to interpret uh, this clause. It's staff's interpretation that this is intended to permit standalone buildings to have drive-throughs so long as they're designed to um, minimize the, the impacts listed. This could also, of course, be read um, that drive-ups must be, you know, the first sentence stands alone and the drive-up must be part of a multi-tenant mixed-use development. In either case, staff feels that, uh, you know, on the one hand, the pedestrian, um, the, the impacts of the drive-through are mitigated. On the other hand, staff feels that there, there are circumstances here that would allow for a variance. And so we've addressed it on, on both fronts. And we will then go back and address the code itself and, and clean this up. So it is the opinion of staff that all requirements necessary to approve the requested variance are, variances are met. The applicant is proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner. Uh, the applicant would be permitted by right to replace the existing building as it is under Minnesota's non-conforming laws. Instead, they have proposed a new building that will significantly improve the site and bring it closer to compliance with our current regulations. The particulars of this site make it nearly impossible to meet all current requirements. The minimum square footage of a building that would meet building coverage and story requirements on this site is over 16,000 square feet. Uh, the parking requirement for an office, which is our lowest uh, parking ratio, would be 48 spaces for a building that size, and that is not feasible on this site. The intent of the mixed-use district requirements was to encourage the combination of smaller parcels. However, there's no possibility for combination with another site uh, based on the location of the streets here. In regard to the site design standards, there is no way to simultaneously meet all the requirements. The applicant has worked with staff to identify uh, the most critical for, from this district. That would be the placement of the building, landscaping, pedestrian connections, and architecture. This results in a drive-up service lane that is adjacent to 78th Street. The alternative would be to push the building back into the corner. However, that would create a site in which parking would be the most prevalent element. 
In regard to standalone buildings with drive-up service, as I discussed before, the existing use could be rebuilt as it is under laws governing non-conforming uses. Rather than do so, the applicant has pr proposed an improved site. Further, the code exempts sites under two acres from mixed use requirements. And no negative impacts are anticipated. In terms of parking, code allows applicants to request a modification of minimum parking requirements by submitting a study of anticipated demand. Taco Bell has submitted a memo including their uh, parking calculation, their internal parking calculation, which would require 36 stalls. That's based on the number of seats proposed plus five employees. Um, the proposed number of stalls is 39. Staff, uh, or I'm sorry, city code requirements would be for 43 spaces. So they're proposing four stalls less than code requirement. And based on the fact that Border Foods has um, significantly greater knowledge than staff of their parking demand and their customer uh, needs, we're comfortable reducing by four stalls. In terms of usable outdoor open space, staff and the applicant are continuing to discuss the type of amenity that will be added to the area on the north side of the site. Possibilities include a picnic table, a bench, or some other item that will help to create a space that will be a benefit to their employees. In terms of critical issues, the redevelopment potential for this site is uh, severely limited based on its size, its location, its visibility. The proposed plans significantly improve compliance with current regulations. And as I mentioned before, the property owner could continue to use or replace the existing building as it is. Instead, they've proposed what we consider an improvement. Notice of this hearing was sent to all properties within 350 feet. We did receive a letter from Menards, um, which we distributed to you last week and also in hard copy tonight. So you will hopefully have had time to review that. And that, that's staff's report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Representatives, um, applicant representatives are also here tonight. Okay, I just uh, want to start with one question before we open it up. Um, I think one of the the big things for me was the 78th Street. Can you give us right away an update on what MnDOT's uh, plans are as far as 90, 494 and what time frame we're looking at as far as any change in that 78th Street? Uh, widening of 494 at this location is not included in the 20-year plan. So while we have talked to MnDOT, they have reviewed the plans, and they're aware of it, they want the applicant to be aware of it, which they are, they wrote, they wrote a response letter, which we've received, but there are no immediate plans to remove that frontage road. If they would remove it, there remains access on 2nd Avenue. Okay. Okay, with that, um, this is a public hearing. This is an opportunity for, uh, for to you address this. I guess first we should probably start with the representatives of Taco Bell if they wish to add anything at this point. And then uh, questions from the commission. Please uh, state your name and uh, all the essentials so we know who you are. My name is Daniel Rosen. I'm a lawyer in uh, Minneapolis, 300 First Avenue North. And I'm here for Border Foods, the applicant. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, uh, uh, we have uh, nothing to add to the rather complete report that's been provided to you by the city staff. Other than to tell you the Board of Foods has worked hard uh, to cooperate with the city staff and uh, come up with a plan that is, we think, a very substantial improvement for this property, bringing it uh, from uh, uh, non-conforming use uh, to much closer uh, alignment with uh, the intentions of the city code. Uh, I do have, uh, we do have with us tonight uh, Barbara Schneider, the Vice President of Real Estate for Border Foods. Should uh, any members of the commission have uh, questions about any of the details, uh, but uh, uh, unless you do, uh, we would simply ask uh, that the commission uh, recommend the approval of the conditional use permit and the variances. Okay, I'm just gonna, just a question for you. Yes, uh, have, have you had an opportunity to, uh, to uh, review the memo that uh, Menard sent relative to the project? Yes. Okay, and do you have any comments relative to that? Uh, <clears throat> any, any items that uh, were addressed in there that you wish to uh, strongly refute or tell us more about, I guess, let's put it that way. Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, the, the letter uh, goes into some detail with regard to uh, several of the aesthetic elements of the of the uh, proposed project, 
Uh, we don't believe that any of them go uh, to the question of whether or not uh, our application ought to be approved. Uh, none of them affect uh, the fact that this is a, a dramatic improvement of the property uh, from the perspective of, from, from the perspective of, of bringing it into closer alignment uh, with the city code. Uh, we don't think that any of the uh, concerns that have been raised uh, uh, undermine at all uh, the recommendations of the staff that's been provided to the uh, commission. Are there any other questions at this point? Tom? I just want to understand the <clears throat> ownership of the property has changed since the last time this property was uh, in question. It has not. It has, it not. has and not. And a property owner representative, uh, Mr. Nelson, is also here tonight. Okay. Okay, I guess that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wish to address the commission on this matter? Uh, good evening and thank you. Um, I'm sure some of you recognize me, uh, hopefully with good thoughts. I know I think the last time I was in front of the, the city council, I was quoted in the little paper as being visibly upset. Um, so I'll try not to make that happen tonight. Um, my name is Theron Berg. I manage the real estate department at Menards. Um, Tyler, who you may remember, and myself worked on the, the Menards redevelopment uh, when that came through plan commission and city council. Uh, and I want to make a few comments. I, I will not be lengthy. You, you certainly have the letter that, that I wrote. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about this intersection of, of Nicollet and the freeway. Um, over the years, there's been some redevelopment there. Uh, the Menard store is redeveloped. And obviously that, to, to what is our flagship store, um, the Chinese restaurant's not there anymore. And I think there are many that are, that are happy with that. Um, you know, I ate at the little Mexican restaurant tonight. That's certainly an attractive building. The only thing left there is the gas station, and to some extent, you know, what I call the Burger King site. And my experience with the city of Richfield has been that you go above and beyond, and you want the best, and you want the most attractive. Um, and I don't think you're getting this, that from this Taco Bell. Um, I think if you look in your packet, they have some color elevations, and it's a tan or brown Taco Bell. Um, just like you see across this country everywhere. I think if you're going to approve this, you should ask them to go above and beyond as far as facade, just like Menards did, um, and just like we hope happens to the gas station one day. It's our flagship corner, flagship store, and we want it to look nice. Um, and I want to, you know, I'm a real estate guy, so a lot of the little details that, that he referenced, you know, that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference a few, if you don't mind. Um, the landscaping, you know, they've done a lot of landscaping in the northwest corner of this site. I think it would be better used if they brought some of that landscaping along the freeway. Just relocate it, it'll look better. Um, I wanna touch on a couple other things. You know, certainly access and I'm, I'm certain they're reaching out to MnDOT just like we did. When we went through the process, there was discussions with MnDOT about closing the frontage road access point to Nicollet. Um, we certainly weren't in favor of it. It's certainly out there as a possibility and they should be aware. Um, when we worked through with the dolphins, um, there's also a specific line where the taking would take place. Um, and if they haven't checked where that, that property line would be, they should. Um, I don't know if that lands right in, the, in their building or in the landscaping or in the drive through but they should at least be aware that that's hanging out there. Um, I wanna talk about pedestrian upgrades, and I could be completely wrong on this one. Menards extended the sidewalk along the frontage road, and it dead ends at what I call the Burger King site, the west side. I don't see an extension of that on their plans. And it may just be because it, my copy's too small. If it's not on there, it should be. Um, they should also take into account 
you know, you have the overpass, pedestrian overpass, and that should connect west to a sidewalk along uh, 2nd Street. I'm certain whoever uses that pedestrian overpass is going to cut straight across the road, and we should account for that on the west side. Uh, a couple other things that were important when we went through the process, where are the dumpsters? You know, again, I had a small plan. Maybe you guys have the answer to that. Um, and just a couple of things lastly. You know, I've gone around and around in my head if, if the dead end of this parking lot should be a concern. Um, I can tell you that the Taco Bell in Eau Claire, you know, where our corporate headquarters are, is the same way. Um, I want to make it, if we go and look at the Mexican restaurant on the other side of Nicollet, you know, it's tough to get in and out of because there's one way in and out. That's what you're going to have for this Taco Bell. That's my, my best analogy. Um, so you should look at um, creating another access point on the west. And I state in my letter, they're moving the access point on the frontage road closer to the intersection. Um, maybe MnDOT will approve that, uh, maybe they won't, but probably not a good idea. So that's, that's the real estate guy. I mean, I want to talk kind of broad scope as I finish. It should be a nicer building. You know, it's been my experience in front of this commission with your city council and with staff that you insist on the best and the best looking, and this isn't it. Um, is it a more attractive building? I suppose. Not much of a standard there. Um, also in the, in the staff report, improved parking. I suppose it couldn't get much worse than what's there today. Significantly improved landscaping? Obviously. Does that mean it's the best and, it's, and you guys can't or shouldn't ask for more? You should ask for more. Um, enhanced walkability, I guess. If adding the sidewalk along the frontage road makes enhanced walkability, then I suppose it is. You know, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, you know, our interest here is, is at least in part that this is our flagship store and we want this Taco Bell to be as nice as possible. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Yeah, Tom? <clears throat> If I could ask you a question. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we have uh, artist renderings here that are on paper. Um, it certainly is different on paper than it is uh, looking at it in, in reality. Um, it, just briefly, but elaborate for me a bit why you really think this particular uh, facade is is not attractive and is not compatible with your brick building next door. Sure, thank you. Um, certainly nicer than what's there today, I would agree. The brown tan, from my perspective, from a consumer perspective, is the building that they've been building for 30 or 40 years. It's tan ephus, there's absolutely no upgrade in material in 75% of this building. Um, you know, when I started coming to Richfield and working through this process for the Menard store, I always looked at the Culver's on the south side of Nicollet. It's a very nice building. They took great care in making it nice. I think it's in Bloomington. They didn't get the standard Culver's. You know, we have those in Eau Claire. That's not it. You know, I think they can do much better, and I think you should insist upon it. What, what would you change? Um, I would change materials. In and, what way? Um, anything other than EFIS, whether it doesn't necessarily have to be brick. I'm sure there's other uh, materials that would be an upgrade. And I would, if I was staff or if I was reviewing the plan, I would ask them, show me some other ones that you've done. Let me see what, what you've done to upgrade in other communities. And what color scheme would you use? Um, Keep in mind that you're in a building here that's kind of brown and tan as yeah, well. Yeah, and brown and tan is very popular. <clears throat> and I wouldn't, um, 
typically I would not have an issue with that color scheme. Um, but I do believe, and I'm sure they're going to tell me if I'm wrong, that that's what a Taco Bell's looked like for 30 years, and you were getting their prototypical design. You didn't get that from us. Okay. Uh, just a couple comments. I see where the sidewalk actually looks like it's along Second or uh, 78th Street, so that's that's true. Second comment is that I drove past there this evening again just to kind of make sure I wasn't missing something, but. Uh, I actually think that the colors that you've got probably are going to be very nice against the the wooden background that you have on the Menards lumber yard. So I think it's it's probably going to fit in very nicely and be you know be a very nice setting actually with those colors because you've got that green uh, high wall back there that kind of portrays in back of it. I think any shrubberies in that that go against that are going to help. And b by the way, I think you guys have done a really nice job, so I'm not knocking that. But the, the other thing that I noticed, too, is that there's really no sidewalk on 2nd Avenue anyhow because you don't have one on there either. We don't. Yes. So, so to add one probably is going to be kind of for not anyhow at that point. I mean, I think the, I agree with you that probably the 78th needs to come in there and should fit. Um, but the other one isn't there either. So um, that's just my comments relative to some of the things that you had said. Yeah, and I would agree generally with the sidewalk along 2nd with the caveat that you have the pedestrian overpass, which we should make sure connects along the frontage road. Other questions? Yep. Is there a thought to, um, to close off the frontage road to Nicollet? Did I hear you say that? Uh, you did, and that was discussed when we went through the process with MnDOT. Yeah. Um, that's certainly a possibility. You know, in the tw in the future, farther than twenty year plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the Nicolet interchange would go away. Oh, when the four ninety four, but not correct because there's a lot of businesses and and apartments, and I mean it would be yeah. and it I've, wouldn't and be conducive to good traffic. And Melissa yeah, can correct me when I'm wrong. If memory serves me, um, I think MnDOT almost put it out there to us saying, would you object? What do you think? Should we do it? And our obvious response was, you know, no. Yeah. No, I just had never heard that, that that was a thought to close that over. Yeah, and then I guess the, the other thing that the applicants should be aware is that taking will land near their building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We used to show that line on our plans. Okay, other questions? Okay, seeing none. You, oh, Tom, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, you want to close the public No, go ahead if you have another okay. question. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be for you. Okay. It would be for you folks, please. It's, it's relative to pedestrian traffic. Um, have you researched it? Do you expect from the neighborhood, which is further down, apartments and so on, do you expect foot traffic to your restaurant? Or is it uh, going to be 99.9% .9 motorized traffic? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, my name is Barbara Schneider. I'm VP of Development for Board of Foods. <coughs> Um, to specifically answer the question without giving away Taco Bell trade secrets, uh, a large percentage of our business is drive-through. And it is um, a very disproportionate share. Uh, should staff uh, think that we need to make a sidewalk connection onto second, we will certainly take a look at that and work with work with staff on that. But, but clearly, um, most of our business is through the drive-through. I'd also just like to make a couple of comments uh, about Menards and, and some of their observations. Uh, just to be clear, our dumpsters, we do not have a, an exterior trash enclosure. The dumpster is included within the footprint of the building. 
It's a feature that uh, staff complimented us on when we brought it to their attention. And uh, I, I can't understand why there would be confusion about that, so I just want to clarify that, that the dumpsters are enclosed within the footprint of the building. Um, we've, we've worked very hard with staff, and this is not the building that Taco Bell has been building for the last 30 years. In fact, it's a new image design that Taco Bell released just last October. And if you can remember, uh, at 66th and Penn, we had a mission building. And that was the original Taco Bell building. And, and Taco Bell has gone through some evolutions of that. Uh, but, but clearly, this design is, is new to the system and the first one for our franchise organization. Um, we think the colors are terrific. Most of the cities that we've worked, it, worked in and, and uh, enjoy the earth tone colors. Uh, we've taken uh, uh, a landscape architect by the name of Patrick Sarver, and Patrick helped us design the landscape plan and gave it thought with, with colors and materials of, of plant life that we think are, are urban friendly, if you will. And uh, I'm proud of the work we've done. Staff has been incredibly gracious to us. And I respectfully ask for your approval of this project this evening. Can I just ask a question just to follow on? You mentioned the sidewalk. I, I do think it does have personally some value. Even though it would only go the extent of your property, it would stop. But from a perspective of the cars coming in and out, at least it gives some, otherwise they're walking on the street on that uh, second avenue no matter sure. what. So I think it does have some merit to it and I hope that you'll readdress that if this you know, goes through. And then um, the second thing is, is that, w what are your comments relative to the materials used on the building and what have you seen relative to the other designs, obviously? Um. I have the architect here, if you'd like to hear from the architect. The EFIS is a, is a hard, hard surface EFIS. It is not insulated behind it. It is, it is hard. It is durable. Uh, I don't believe our materials are cheap. Uh, I'm actually kind of offended by that comment. And um, perhaps our architect would like, if, if you'd like to hear from him, I can give you expert opinion about what our materials are like. Uh, I would appreciate that. Good evening. My name is Dean Matson. I work with WCL Associates. We're an architectural office over in St. Louis Park. And uh, as far as the materials go on the building, I don't know the exact percentages, but the major <clears throat> portion of the building is an EFIS. EFIS typically is, uh, uh, is installed over foam, an insulated product that's maybe one inch, and then it's either built out to uh, accommodate some bumps, if you will, in the building. Uh, this is a hard coat of EFIS, which uh, what that means is it's basically put on over a cement board. Another word for that is Duroc. <coughs> Excuse me, so it doesn't have the, the give that EFIS typically has behind it. <coughs> If it's uh, oh, uh, hit by something, a rock or individuals, um, it's not giving. It's, uh, it's not taking that bump and transferring it into the foam and then uh, deteriorating the EFIS. So it is a very, very durable, uh, watertight system. Our EFIS uh, uh, here in Minnesota has been through a number of changes. But primarily, it's been uh, um, had a, kind of a bad rap because of uh, its install. And that's been pretty much taken out of code now. So uh, uh, we have that material that's a major material on the building. We have a uh, uh, stone that's on the, on the building. I have a, a piece of it back over there if you'd like to see that. That covers our towers. and. Uh, the rest of the building then uh, kind of has a metal uh, 
they call it a slat wall over uh, the portion of it. And that you can see where the Taco Bell signage is on, uh, in your packet. The materials are definitely not cheap. They're very, very durable, much more durable than typical EFIS has been in the past. And uh, I really think that's, that's about all the more I can give you. It's a wood stud building. So, you know, it's a typical, uh, as far as that goes, but its exterior finish is extremely durable. These buildings need to be that way. They need to be 20, 30 years worth of material so that we don't have to touch them. We don't have to repair them. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Dennis? Chair, <clears throat> I, I did have a question for our applicant and the question was what what are you doing to um, satisfy the height requirement anything I know you're asking for it to be one story but are we doing anything to make it look like we're we're bigger I don't believe that was a request uh, we are close to what I would consider a two-story height <clears throat> though we don't have windows and so forth in that in that that amount um, we're about 20 uh, I'm not sure we're over 20 feet in 20 feet in height, about 22, I think, to the top of those towers. So um, to, if you take a typical two-story building that would have a mezzanine in it, possibly without any uh, windows in it, um, that would be in the neighborhood of eight with a foot worth of structure, maybe two foot worth of structure, and then another eight and two. So you're 16, 26 somewhere in height, and this building's approximating a two-story height. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Anything else? Okay, oh, Melissa. Chair Jeps, I, I just wanted to comment a little bit on the <coughs> sidewalk issue, and also I can address your comment a little bit. Commissioner Schuler. <clears throat> when Menards was redeveloping, we had discussed sidewalk uh, circling the entire site coming along 2nd Avenue. It was our decision um, at a staff level and what we recommended to the Planning Commission and Council was that sidewalk not go along the west side of 2nd Avenue because of the freight traffic for Menards, the traffic to the Garden Center. Uh, we didn't think that was the best place for pedestrians to walk along 2nd Avenue. Our intent is that if and when any sort of redevelopment happens on the east side of the street, that the sidewalk would go along that side of the street. We thought it was more appropriate for pedestrians to be um, passing. It was, it's also friendlier with the height of Menards and the large wall and the truck traffic. It's just not really a pleasant place for pedestrians to be. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't see the need to require it along that west side. And that's why we haven't asked Taco Bell to put it in on 2nd Avenue because like, like you said, it would be a sidewalk to nowhere. Um, in terms of the height, city staff have not typically asked for pa parapet walls and fake um, false second stories and things like that. Our intent really is to get true second stories where they're possible. Um, and we've felt that resources can be, uh, you know, architectural elements we have certainly asked for on some other buildings, architectural treatments at corners that can be higher, things like that, things like you see up at uh, 66 in Lindale. But on a building that everybody knows is not going to have a, a second story, we typically have not asked you to add height just for height's sake. Mm -hmm. So we did not request it. Okay, thanks for your clarification. Further okay, question. anything else? Further question on uh, pedestrian traffic. Um, <clears throat> this goes to both groups, I guess. Um, how much foot traffic do you expect to come out of the Menards parking lot after somebody is at Menards and has spent gobs of money and they decide to go over and get Taco Bell? Uh, how much foot traffic do you expect uh, to bleed off of the customers from Menards? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, <clears throat> uh, the question was specifically foot traffic. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody's going to leave their car in Menard's parking lot and walk into Taco Bell to grab lunch and then go back and get their car and go home. I, I don't know. My expectation would be very little. 
<clears throat> Commissioner Rublin. I, I just wanted to add, when we ask for the sidewalk mm -hmm. extension, mm -hmm. staff's um, thoughts are that that is an ex a very busy bus stop. Mm -hmm. And we would expect more uh, foot traffic coming from that bus stop okay. than necessarily between the two businesses. So that okay. was why the sidewalk was, it was very important to staff. Mm -hmm. Sure. I would just add, it wasn't in the question, uh, we're certainly going to get some four year traffic. Mm -hmm. Between the two businesses. Um, and I would also agree that the sidewalk doesn't have to go all the way up to second. I think you should account for the overpass over the freeway. Okay. I do have a couple other comments. When I, <laughs> well, I, I do have one real quick comment. It, it's unfortunate for both of you that probably one of the biggest detractors in the appearance at that corner happens to be um, MnDOT's problem. <clears throat> that really is a horribly unattractive exit uh, off of 494, um, and it detracts from the entire area. Uh, I really think that if we could in any way uh, uh, pressure them a little bit to spruce up that, that exit, uh, especially coming from the east, um, <clears throat> would, would go a long way to uh, making that area more attractive. Okay, anything else? Other, <clears throat> otherwise, could we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Chair, okay, second. Chair Jabs, I, I think oh. that um, Mr. Berg indicated he had a few more comments oh. before you, before right you close the public hearing. Your chance. I would agree with the, the freeway interchange as I uh, came here today. Um, I don't believe it's appropriate for me to ask questions, so I guess I, got, I have to rely on you all. Um, and I guess the biggest thing, I want to make one comment and one question. This is a 20 or 30 year or 40 year decision. And I would be interested to know if this is or is not, um, whether it's a new prototype or not, a typical Taco Bell. Is it their prototype or is it not? If it is, you can ask for more and they will give it. If I could, yeah, having or uh, being a resident from around 66th and Penn, um, this building looks nothing like the building that was there. Mm -hmm. um, nothing, uh, completely different. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, the building that we have designed here is not a prototypical Taco Bell. The typical prototypical Taco Bell does not have trash enclosure within the footprint of the building. We design our buildings specifically for Minnesota, what we like to see in the communities. We're residents, we live here, we're members of the community, and our buildings are currently beyond what the standard of a Taco Bell prototypical restaurant is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I would look, ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye thanks. Okay. Um, well, again, just my comment. I drove by there tonight, and um, I took your little photo and kind of held it up there. And honestly, I think it's going to look wonderful. And I don't think we're, I don't think this is, this is a great plan as far as I'm concerned. I think it'll fit in very nicely. I think it'll look very nice. And uh, from my perspective, I think, You've done a nice job. So um, understand the comments, but it looks good to me. So that's my comment. Um, others? Can I ask a question? Uh, <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I agree. I think you know, one of the interesting things about us as a commission and, and the, the different things that we end up seeing, you know, in the case of Menards specifically, and I don't mean for Menards to think they were being picked on, but that was in the context of a plan unit development where it was the assemblage of a number of different pieces of property in, in a very large building um, where, it was, where it was all these issues and, and hopefully Menards feels like, you know, we were working as a city with you so you could successfully put a business in there uh, despite conflict with uh, a neighboring parcel. Um, you know, and, and I think the same level of consideration applies here um, where we're not in the context of a plan unit development, 
we're looking at a variance. You know, there, there are no other controlling design guidelines that would tend to push uh, external appearance one way or the other. So I, I think it's a nice property. You know, I understand that there are life cycle differences in materials between brick versus panel construction, but uh, on some level, it, it's, it's not a, a two-story, um, very large footprint building. And, and, and I guess I, I would sincerely hope for, you know, given that the adjacencies will persist, that none of the Menard's comments are the result of prior uh, bad feelings for the way that the original attempt to acquire that site went down. So I, I think it's a nice site. I think it's um, a definite improvement. Tom? Uh, Melissa, um, I was struck by the uh, sort of irony that uh, Menards replaced their building and they were allowed to as a non-conforming building according to Minnesota law, correct? Actually, Menards expanded a non-conforming yeah. use. Which they could do. Which they could do um, by our code. Right. A statute okay. would have allowed them to replace it, but not expand. Okay. Uh, right before Menards came in, you'll remember we processed an ordinance amendment to allow for the expansion of right. non-conforming uses in this particular district. Right. And, and some of that is applied in this case as well with the uh, Taco Bell, since they're going to uh, be replacing a footprint uh, uh, on a non-conforming building? It's actually a separate set of rules okay. because this is not an expansion. The actual <clears throat> footprint of the building will be smaller. So okay. um, initially, we thought that we would process them under the same administrative process as Menards, which be, would be expansion of a non-conforming use. Okay. And there was a lot more um, wiggle room i'll say for staff there was a it was a lot there was a lot more negotiation mm -hmm. as long as you were coming closer the city could approve something like that um, because burger king is not getting bigger their footprint is not getting bigger they actually have to apply for the variances and meet the variance criteria menards just had to get closer they didn't actually have to go through the process of um, is this reasonable is there something unique about this site? All those variance criteria that apply in this case. Right. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, I just wanna say that I'm certainly supporting this. I think it looks like a good addition and I like to see businesses come into Richfield and uh, we missed our Taco Bell on 66 and Penn. <laughs> Glad to see another one coming. Uh, I think it looks good. I'm happy to have it. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, I'm sure uh, whatever goes in there will be very popular because you have such a good location <clears throat> there. I'm nervous about losing parking spots. One to three seems okay with me. Uh, when I get over three to four uh, to six, I get nervous. So I'm nervous about the parking. Okay, anything else? So just to comment specifically on, uh, <clears throat> given the aesthetics aren't part of the test, for requirements for variance, no. uh, specifically with respect to the the factors that are balanced for granting the variance, I think staff has done a a great job balancing the objectives of, of various competing uh, uh, zoning requirements. So I think it's uh, I believe the variance requirements are met. How would you like to make a motion? I move the uh, staff's recommendation for the project. A second. second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, carries. Good luck and welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Okay, on to new business. Uh, reschedule <coughs> the regular May 2013 Planning Commission meeting from May 27th to May 29th, staff. Sure, as, um, as you all know, May 27th is the Memorial Day holiday, so we're looking to reschedule the May meeting. There is an agenda item, at least one, uh, most likely two, and so we do need to reschedule. We're proposing for May since uh, May 29th, Wednesday, since Tuesday is the council meeting. Would any of our actions for that meeting be required in advance of 
the Tuesday council meeting? No, we typically schedule uh, any anything that has consideration before the planning commission is scheduled for two weeks later on the council agenda. We need to make a motion on that then? You do. Okay. Don't move. Okay. Seconded. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Thank you. We, we don't have to schedule a snow day just in case, do we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> okay, on to uh, no old business, I don't think. Okay, moving on to liaison reports, Community Services Commission. Tom? Uh, their discussion uh, this last meeting had a lot to do with uh, capital improvements and uh, budgeting issues uh, and their like for instance uh, um, moving up uh, certain actions in the in the parks uh, or replacing boardwalk at um, uh, Wood Lake Nature Center things like that um, there was a bit of discussion too about uh, the impending hockey team that will be coming into the ice arena and uh, improvements that will be need to be made there and uh, uh, agreements with the team and so on uh, so that that should actually i think be exciting for the city okay thank you uh city council dennis uh sorry no update no update hra josh isn't here uh school board not here yes. Uh, Transportation Committee? No report. No report. Okay. Seeing that, uh, let's see, City Planner's report. Anything? I just have a couple of things to mention about the, um, the upcoming meetings. Uh, right now, it's still tentative, but there is a special study session between the Planning Commission and City Council scheduled for May 28th, Tuesday, May 28th, and that's to discuss um, some some impediments to business development, specifically small business development. We're going to talk about parking requirements and fire code uh, sprinkler requirements. So um, that meeting, that topic has been pushed a couple times, but as of right now, it's scheduled for May 28th. Then on May 29th, um, just to, to tease you, uh, the applications that are proposed for that evening um, are the co-op, that would be adjacent mm -hmm. to Lindale Garden Center and the Honda dealership. So some big applications potentially mm -hmm. on that meeting agenda. So if you can try and look ahead on your calendars, that, that'll be, mm -hmm. uh, not that they're not all important, but. Good teasing, way to be. Okay. Okay, uh, Okay. so next meeting is then uh, at this point, May 29th. And is there anything else? Yeah, I, I have um, an observation. Space by uh, Pizza Luce. Uh, I was there uh, Sunday. Uh, parking is just getting to be, is, it's not getting to be, it is a huge problem there. There were people parking up and down the streets. The parking lot was totally full. Uh, people were using the post office parking lot. Um, clearly there, there is a deficiency there uh, on their heavy business days. And uh, I think that we need to bear that issue in mind. As uh, Mr. Stark said last time, we seem to be a victim of our own success on some of these things, but we have to really start being uh, more deliberate, uh, especially when it comes to parking. There is not much of a remedy there. The, certainly Pizza Luce can't invent more parking space uh, for their patrons unless they establish some sort of a, an agreement with the, the um, nature center and have people walking or some of the other structures around. But uh, Sunday it was particularly difficult. And even during the day when I've been down around there, it's becoming very, very congested and traffic is becoming difficult to navigate around on uh, Lakeshore. Uh, that, that is an issue. Um, one of the questions I have is, um, can you update us a bit on this housing uh, visioning task force? Uh, what is going on there? What are the expectations? Uh, when does that expect to wrap up, uh, et cetera? 
I, I can certainly provide you with an update over email. I, I haven't been attending the task force meetings and Director Stark wasn't able to come tonight. Okay. Um, from what I hear, the meetings are going very well. They've had a number of guest speakers. Mm -hmm. um, the group seems to be very interested in coming up with a constructive uh, policy for affordable housing in the community. Um, I believe the, the those, task force uh, is supposed to wrap up by early summer. So I, I think they're supposed to have recommendations by June, okay. but I can, I can check in on that and report okay. back. Are those sessions recorded? Are they available on the website if so? Yes, or? they are. They are recorded, um, and I believe they're available on the website. I'll double check that, but I know okay, they're please. recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can confirm that the uh, the guest speaker presentations are on the website in video. I don't know about the interaction with the, uh, the task force itself, but the okay. guest speakers are. Okay, thank you. Okay. I missed one, uh, Leah, so I'm reporting. That was for the uh, Chamber of Commerce. So go ahead. Absolutely. So the uh, Salute to Small Business, which is an annual event, uh, is happening this Wednesday. Uh, last call went out from uh, Angie, the uh, Chamber President, uh, today, but it's possible you could still obtain tickets if you wished, uh, and I encourage folks to check out the Chamber website. Thank you. That was very important. Sorry, I'm glad you reminded me. What, Thanks. Any minor comment? Uh, what? The planning no. for the second open streets at PenFest, which would be the sixth PenFest, but the second open streets at PenFest is underway. Uh, we would, of course, be looking for volunteers. They could Call Ann Hofer at the uh, rec, uh, uh, community center, but uh, we're actively uh, pursuing that particular event. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.